welcome to the weekly current fair class today we will be dealing with the topics from society security and as well as ethics we will be covering the articles that have come across in the hindu as well as the indian uh, express the first topic that we will be starting is, is uh, respect to society it is a scheme called as pm shri basically launched by government day before yesterday shri stands for schools for rising india the scheme becomes important in the context of prelims exams upsc has been asking uh, asking very questions for last couple of years with respect to the particular schemes launched by various government departments so this scheme also becomes important particularly important in the context of national education policy 2020 we all know that it was a big major transformation to upheaval the school education system this scheme has been launched in that context we will be seeing what this scheme particularly talks about see the scheme was announced on the occasion of national teachers day that is basically 5th of september okay what does this scheme talks about first of all it is a centrally sponsored scheme this is relevant for your prelims exam it may the upsc may ask whether it is a centrally sponsored or center sector scheme it is a centrally sponsored scheme for upgradation and development of selected existing schools thus for some particular schools will be selected not all of the schools you will have to make a differentiation with respect to other schemes the here particularly just give me a second selected schools will be asked or will be eligible to come under this scheme not all of the government schools will be coming under this scheme government will be selecting some particular schools further they may be managed by the central government they may be managed by the state or they may be managed by the ut government or by the local bodies not only the schools coming under the ut or state all of the schools whether they are under the managed by the central government by the state by the ut or even by the local bodies some schools from this scenario will be selected by the government from under this particular scheme so what it aims at what the schools that will be selected what will be their purpose it will aim at creating holistic and well rounded individuals equipped with 21st century skills so if you have covered or if you have read holistically and comprehensively the national education policy 2020 you must be well versed with its components the points that you will be seeing here are very much in sync with the components of the national education policy the major objective of the national education policy to upgrade the education system to equip the individuals with the 21st century skills to improve the pedagogy structure all of the these things will be covered under this particular scheme what it extra talks about is schools will be equipped with modern infrastructure including the labs smart room classrooms basically and libraries this will be the infrastructure creation another thing it means to show is equitable inclusive and diverse leadership in the respective regions by providing high quality education so what is the basic purpose of the scheme is basic purpose of of the scheme is to improve the education system by including the basically 21st century skills in the upcoming generation so that they can reach the respected leadership positions within their respective fields as well as the regions and the tool for that achievement is basically the upgradation of the school infrastructure by making smart room classes by making new labs new equipment that will be the that is the purpose of the scheme so this is our first topic couple of things to remember here for your prelims exams first of all launched on the eve of basically national teachers day second thing it is a centrally sponsored scheme third thing not all but selected schools will be coming under this scheme fourth thing all of the schools whether they are managed at by the center state ut or local bodies they all will be coming under this scheme so this is the what this was our first topic moving forward our second topic again basically in our last class also we discussed the topic with respect to cyber security okay the malware trojans you if you haven't seen it you can link on to our uh, previous video and catch up with it 
so this again talks about cyber security what are the challenges and issues of cyber security and majorly we will be dealing with the legal and institutional structures with respect to the cyber security and what are the measures that needs to be taken to improve the cyber security infrastructure as well as the whole of the scenario or whole of the strategy planning so first of all you can also use this introduction with respect to your main answers or you if you come across an essay or so see first of all new forms of cyber security threats are emerging we see in the cyber space where these threats are emerging in the cyber space why because of the technological revolution that is taking place first of all we need to understand that what are the basically new forms of threats that are faced by india that threats are faced in the cyber space why they are becoming so important and basically why so frequent that is because of the technological revolution that is taking place all over the world and particularly with respect to india and these threats are very different from traditional threats traditional threat is basically old warfare techniques why because they can be conducted by sitting at far places without physical presence you know what earlier ter if terrorist attacks used to happen individuals or terrorist they need to be physically present in the particular geographical space where they want to conduct a attack but now these attacks can be conducted by sitting at far away far away places so it increases the burden as well as the difficulty of the government why because criminals will be hard to identify as well as to catch them first of all it will take a lot of task and expertise to see basically who has conducted an attack whether that attack is conducted by state or by non state actors this classification is very difficult or whether if for example we are able to establish that that attack particular attack was conducted by non state actors but whether that particular non state actors were funded by state or not okay this comes a very difficult task to prove further to catch them we have established that that so particular so and so individuals have conducted a terrorist attack on our infrastructure but how do we catch them when they are sitting at far away places that is why the issue of cyber security becomes so much important moving forward what are the new forms that we are seeing in the cyber space that are happening new forms of attack they are in the form of cyber espionage cyber warfare cyber attack you must have studied these classifications within your security classes uh, so these are the new forms you can also basically if you haven't studied them they are can be important for your prelims exams as well so please go and search these terms that what are these particular terms cyber espionage what is cyber attack or what is cyber warfare where different type of malware such as we had discussed in our last video also what are the malwares what is trojan such as virus is there trojan is there or worms are there basically which are used to harm the critical infrastructure of the country what is a critical infrastructure such as like basically nuclear plants which on which basically whole of the energy sector is dependent of the country then basically it can be some major government department which houses the information with respect to the citizens or it may be the electricity plant okay you must have uh, seen the news basically uh, last year when mumbai power plant was electricity power plant was attacked by cyber uh, uh, a uh, cyber security atta attack was there on the mumbai electricity power plant and it was alleged that basically it was conducted by the chinese individuals so this is a critical infrastructure now let's coming coming to the stats what this what is the status of india with respect to the cyber security see according to the data council of india india was the second most cyber attacked country between 2016 and between 2018 so that is why cyber security becomes so much important for us if the frequency of attacks that are happening in the world india is at the second place between these 3 to 4 years so that is why the upgrading of the cyber security infrastructure the proper institutional mechanisms the proper legal mechanisms needs to be there in the place so that these type of attacks can be adequately dealt with further another important point for your pre there is a particular index that is released with respect to cyber security preparedness that is called as the cyber security 
a global cyber cyber security index and it is released by itu that is international telecommunication union and it ranked india at the 10th place so you need to know about this what what is global cyber security index and it is released by itu it will be helpful for your prelims exams indexes are all the time asked by the upsc so what is the introductory part here new forms of threats are emerging they are in the form of cyber espionage attack warfare why they are happening because of the technological revolution and they are different from traditional warfare why because the, because of the physical presence is not there of the criminals which makes it hard to identify who has done the attack and basically and more importantly to catch them coming to the statistics basically data council of india stated that india is the second most cyber attacked country and global cyber security index states that it is released by itu which ranks india at the 10th place moving forward see now we will be dealing with the cyber security issues why we are not able to adequately deal with these issues first of all is the basically international convention part see this can again be asked with respect to your prelims exams budapest convention is there it is the only convention as well as the first convention that seeks to address internet and computer crime by harnessing national laws basically improving investigative techniques it is a international convention again you will should know that basically if, if, if when it is asked in the prelims exams what is a budapest convention or what is it related to it is a first convention which deals with the internet issues and it aims to harmonize the national laws with the international mechanisms and improve investigative mechanisms see india again important for your prelims, prelims exams india has not joined this particular convention because it stated that the data theft or any attacks that are happening it will give cross jurisdiction which hampers our national sovereignty of the country it is the prerogative of the country or of the government basically to take such actions or to against the individuals who have done the cyber attacks but giving cross jurisdiction to others to come and investigate that particular individuals it violates the national sovereignty that is why india has not joined this particular uh, convention so this is our first point second is the ppp framework ppp obviously stands for public private partnership framework it states that basically most of the cyber security operations are carried out by agency such as certain you must have again studied certain in your classes it is the first agency which we which responds to the if cyber attack is there or if you are a victim of cyber crime in the giving fast changing nature we all know that new technological developments are emerging new technologies are taking place every day but government is not able to keep up with those technological advancements every day government infrastructure as well as no laws are not continuously upgraded to deal with the emerging technological advancements that is why there is a lag between the advancements that are happening in the private sector and the upkeep of the government that is the public sector so what we propose is the ppp framework public private partnership framework that is not adequately in place in india where government can keep up with the advancements in the private sector and can harm sorry harness that talent and the expertise that is prevalent in the private sector to keep its to keep up its own departmental security so what it states that is that intensity of cyber attacks is there then there is a need to leverage that i have told you private sector expertise in combating cyber crimes through the ppp framework but this has not been done so far so this is our second point third one is with respect to you to your it and national cyber security policy 2013 see the national cyber security 2000 uh, uh, policy that was there it was a very revolutionary and big breakthrough mechanism that was adopted by the government to deal with the issues of cyber warfare or cyber espionage that is there but again 10 years have passed by and we have not been continuously updating it it has various loopholes which gives basically the advantage to the criminals to escape the wrath of the law so what is happening here is some of the experts have pointed out the present that present legal 
एंड फैसिलिटेटिव फ्रेमवर्क फॉर द साइबर क्राइम वॉरफेयर सच एज आई टी एक्ट इट इज़ नॉट इनफ टू हैंडल टेक्नोलॉजिकली एडवांस्ड साइबर क्राइम न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज दैट आर इमर्जिंग न्यू फॉर्म्स ऑफ साइबर वॉरफेयर न्यू फॉर्म्स ऑफ साइबर थ्रेट्स दैट आर इमर्जिंग बेसिकली दे डू नॉट फाइंड अ प्लेस इन दिस साइबर सिक्योरिटी पॉलिसी बिकॉज वाई अगेन इट इज़ नॉट एडिकुएटली अपडेटेड इट डज नॉट अगेन प्रमोट न्यू इंस्टीट्यूशनल मैकेनिजम्स विच कैन टेक केयर ऑफ द न्यू इमर्जिंग थ्रेट्स दैट इज वाई द पॉलिसी बेसिकली नीड्स टू बी स्ट्रेंदंड एंड आई टी एक्ट बेसिकली इट वॉज एस्टेब्लिश इन टू थाउजेंड एंड इन दीज ट्वेंटी ईयर्स इट हैज बीन रेयरली अमेंडेड और अपडेटेड टू कीप अप विद द टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट्स और द न्यू फॉर्म्स ऑफ वॉरफेयर सो वॉट एवर अवर थ्री पॉइंट्स एयर वेरी सिंपल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इंडिया हैज नॉट ज्वाइंड द इंटरनेशनल कन्वेंशन बिकॉज ऑफ विच इट इज नॉट एबल टू इफेक्टिवली कलेबोरेट विद द इंटरनेशनल एजेंसीज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द साइबर सिक्योरिटी थ्रेट्स सेकेंड इज द पी 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 फ्रेमवर्क इज नॉट देयर गवर्नमेंट इज लैगिंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द एडवांसमेंट्स इन द टेक्नोलॉजिकल सेक्टर and it can improve so by going through the ppt uh, sorry ppp framework public private partnership by harnessing the private talent and expertise but it has not been able to do so third one is with respect to the the legal mechanisms that we have in place first particularly the national cyber security policy 2013 and second one the it act they have not been continuously updated or making the way for the technological advancements or the new forms of cyber warfare that can be adequately dealt with so this is our three points and next one is there is a shortage of skilled professionals in our last video also basically we discussed this issue at detail that our indian economy or our indian market does not have adequate presence of professionals which have the expertise basically to deal with the rising cyber threats that are coming here or the new forms of software or technologies are not in particularly in place why because the professionals to deal with such type of crimes are very less in our market so that is the another issue moving forward another issue is they see with respect to jurisdiction i think we again discussed in our introductory part also what what is the issue with respect to jurisdiction see many of the crimes or majority 90% of the crimes are transnational in nature they are conducted at far away geographical places they will be conducted at another geographical space for example the trump election that was there of 2016 it was basically attacked through the russia so at a very far away geographical place so first of all it is transnational in nature when the criminal is sitting at a far away place and the country does not have a has a territorial jurisdiction to investigate crimes at another geographical place or in another country it becomes very difficult to catch that particular criminal and bring him basically in front of the law so that is the another issue that is why cyber security threats are rising because individuals know that that if we will cover or if we will do the particular crime in setting at a far away place basically we will not be the country or the victims of that particular attacks will not be able to catch us because the countries don't have jurisdiction over that particular geographical space and next issue is security and peace what is the another challenge see when you try to harm the critical infrastructure of the country when you try to attack a infrastructure of a country such as basically you can take the example of the iran nuclear facility that was attacked through a particular uh, program called stuxnet that was there see when such type of attacks are there when when the critical infrastructure of the country is hampered or hindered with what happens is that basically national sovereignty and integrity of the country is harmed you can do basically physical harm to the country by sitting at a far away place and when the country does not have its own proper what we say absolute power over the area that is that is of the particular country or that is of hers basically the national sovereignty and integrity of the country will be harmed particularly this happens with respect to the attacks on the critical infrastructure i have already told you critical infrastructure such as like nuclear plants electricity plants that are there or the areas that house the data of the citizens when such attacks happen when the government does not have control 
over that particular infrastructure or over the important programs or software basically government the, there is a loss of national sovereignty because the government is not able to take decisions with utmost independence. So what are the issues again we are dealing with? Uh, uh, that were first of all international convention is not there then PPP framework is not there then laws are not adequately updated personnel are not there next is with respect to jurisdiction and last one is with respect to the loss of national sovereignty and peace. So these are the issues now we will be dealing with respect to what are the legal and institutional mechanisms to deal with the what we say cyber security threats. I have already we have discussed about the in our issues with respect to national cyber security policy 2013 and section 66 f of the ITA these both are what we say the legal mechanisms legal mechanisms to deal with the cyber security threats. So what does this particular national cyber security policy talks about? It aims to improve the protection and resilience of the country's critical infrastructure information. The areas that are very critical or that house the basically critical infrastructure such as again the nuclear power plants, electricity plants, dams are there or another areas it aims to protect them and improve through resilience we means that is it aims to improve the capacity building of this particular area so that it can deal with any type of cyber security attacks. Next is with respect to section 6 of the ITA that is ITA's information technology act ok it deals with the specific provisions dealing with the issues of cyber terrorism that if any you are a victim of cyber crime you are a victim of cyber attack you are a victim of cyber espionage cyber warfare this is the act that deal with or that the particular act that will held, held basically hold the criminals accountable ok it is under this act that basically you will get the justice so these are the legal mechanisms now we will come forward to the basically institutional mechanisms the bodies institutional mechanisms by which we mean that the bodies that have been developed to take care of the cyber threats. So first of all is with respect to your cert in what is the task of cert in I have already told you it responds to the computer security in incidents per report on vulnerabilities and promote the effective IT security practices throughout the country. Whenever you are a victim of cyber crime you approach first of all the cert in it basically responds to the computer related security related incidents as well as besides that it also reports the vulnerabilities and how to promote the cyber security. So that is our first agency. Second you must have studied about is the national cyber security coordination center. See what does it, it talks about? It seeks to basically generate situational awareness of existing and potential cyber threats. What are the cyber threats that a, con, our country is facing and what can be the new forms of a cyber threats that can emerge basically that we have to prepare for in advance that is the task of national cyber security awareness awareness of existing and potential cyber security threats. So these are the basically certain and national cyber security coordination center moving forward. Again again what is the another legal oh sorry what is the other institutional structure you must have again heard about the cyber swachta kendra cyber swachta kendra basically it deals with or it was a platform that was introduced okay but for the internet users to how to basically get rid of the virus and malware that basically penetrate your digital devices that digital device may be computer laptop your smartphone is there any digital device basically how to clean them or how to get rid of the particular virus and malware that have entered your digital device and basically they will leak the information or they will store your critical data that is very that can violate your privacy and autonomy. So what does it deal with? It basically provides the internet users to clean their computers and devices by wiping out viruses and malware. Next again one is a critical one national critical information infrastructure protection center. So again it was established under the IT act we you all know about IT act 2000 
2000 to secure again India's critical information infrastructure. It is a particular body that deals with how to protect our critical infrastructure, how to promote their resilience. And the last one here is the National Cyber Security Coordinator. See, we have seen that the, we have established many of the institutional structure or bodies to deal with the cyber security issues. So, what does this particular do, body do is it basically coordinates different agencies both at the national level and at the state level for the cyber security matters. The bodies that we have seen national, it may be critical information protection center is there, cyber security coordination center is there, Swachta Kendra is there. It aims to or it seeks to promote coordination among all these institutional structures so that a holistic prop strategy can be put in place to deal with the cyber security. The question can be asked with respect to this, particularly with respect to this, that what are the particular legal or institutional structures that are in place to protect us from the cyber security threats. So, you must know about all 7 to 8 that are there in place, particularly with respect to two legal mechanisms that is National Cyber Security Policy 2013 and basically the IT Act 2000 and the various institutional mechanisms that we have discussed so far. Moving forward. We will be de dealing with basically what are the particular measures that needs to be put in place to deal with basically such cyber security challenges or how to improve our resilience of such cyber security threats. See first thing that needs to be done is basically the budgetary provisions. We can allocate a minimum of 2.25 percent or of the annual budget which can be raised up to 1 percent basically. See minimum of 0.5 percent or up to 1 percent at least we can make some particular budgetary provisions yearly that basically we will be contributing these amounts of funds to our security infrastructure to improve our cyber security mechanisms that can be done. Second thing is research, innovation and skill building and technological development. We need to improve our R&D, our government spends only 0.7 percent of the GDP on R&D. We need to improve our spending on R&D so that we can come up with new innovations, new software, new sorry, so new softwares or the new mechanisms basically to deal with the cyber security issues. Further, this budgetary provision will help in skill building. Okay, we have discussed the issue of the what we say skilled professionals are not there. So, this amount, some amount can be particularly marked for this and some can be marked for the technological development also. So, uh, our second point is with respect to research, innovation, skill building and technology development. See, next one is a cyber diplomacy, very important point because we have discussed in issue, issues that cyber security forms or threats basically they take away at far away geographical places. So, what we need is a cyber diplomacy in shaping India's global relations. We have a coordination with the international institutional structures like UN is there or with respect to other countries. So, that basically how to improve the cyber warfare techniques, how to improve our security, how to improve our resilience and India can start with the cyber security preparedness by key through key regional blocks like BIMSTEC is there or basically Shanghai cooperation organization is there. Okay, through these mechanisms, India can promote or India can improve its cyber security resilience. Next one is basically a cyber security services like you have IES services are there or like Indian engineering services are there. On the lines of this, a particular dedicated service can be established to deal with the issues of cyber security. Another thing is basically holding cyber security drills. We should, we need like we have warfare games are there, you must have heard about or basically police techniques, police drills are there to deal with the cyber, uh, security threats, traditional form of security threats. Like that we need to hold the cyber security drills which include real life scenarios with their ramifications so that we are better prepared when we face a attack. Next is basically continuously updating national cyber security strategy. The policies or the legal mechanisms that we have in place, they need to be continuously updated so that basically we can deal with all forms of emerging issues or threats that we are facing. And last one is with respect to data protection law. 
ओके दैट नीड्स टू बी पुट इन प्लेस सो दैट वी कैन प्रोटेक्ट द राइट टू प्राइवेसी विच इज योर फंडामेंटल राइट अंडर आर्टिकल ऑफ ट्वेंटी वन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन गिवन बाई सुप्रीम कोर्ट अंडर द के एस पुटास्वामी जजमेंट यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड अबाउट इट सो इफ यू शुड नो दैट डाटा प्रोटेक्शन बिल दैट वॉज टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन बिल वॉज देयर दैट हैज बीन टेकन बैक बाय द गवर्नमेंट इफ यू हैवन सीन दैट वीडियो यू कैन लिंक ऑन टू दैट वीडियो वट आर द पर्टिकुलर इशूज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई डाटा प्रोटेक्शन बिल वॉज टेकन बैक एंड वॉट गवर्नमेंट इंटेंड्स टू डू फर्दर ओके सो वट आर द मेजर्स दैट वी हैव दैट नीड्स टू बी टेकन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू मेक अ बजटरी प्रोविजन सेकेंड वन वी नीड टू स्पेंड ऑन आर एंड डी स्किल बिल्डिंग टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलपमेंट थर्ड वन इंडिया नीड्स टू गो फॉर साइबर डिप्लोमेसी विद द इंस्टीट्यूशनल मैकेनिजम्स एज वेल एज विद द अदर कंट्रीज इट कैन गो फॉर द साइबर सिक्योरिटी प्रिपेयरनेस थ्रू रीजनल ब्लॉक्स लाइक बिम्स्टेक एंड एस यू इज देयर देन वी नीड टू होल्ड द साइबर सिक्योरिटी ड्रिल्स सो दैट वी आर बेटर प्रिपेयर फॉर द अटैक्स नेक्स्ट वन इज बेसिकली द क्रिएटिंग ऑफ द साइबर सिक्योरिटी सर्विसज ऑन द लाइन्स ऑफ अदर सर्विस लाइक आई एस इज देयर इंडियन इंजीनियरिंग सर्विसज आर देयर एंड सो ऑन नेक्स्ट वन इज कंटिन्यूसली अपडेटिंग अवर लीगल मैकेनिजम्स and the last one is basically data protection law so that we can protect the right to privacy of the individual so this was all that was there with respect to the cyber security you can as you can see that basically there are some things that are very particular or important for your mains exams in this particular topic and there were some things that are very important for your prelims exam as well so that you can segregate both of the things and prepare accordingly next topic that we will be dealing with is basically that is the ethical perspective in development see we have been we will be dealing with the what are the ethical issues that are here why the ethical perspective in development needs to be looked at see we have been seeing this the first half of the year 2022 we have seen so much of the basically natural disasters that we need to look at ourselves that what kind of development we are doing and basically for whom that is development and that development for what basically both the things need to be looked at development for whom and development for what what are our intentions do we need the development that basically destroys our natural environment in your answers you can always start with basically the more examples that you will be providing the more marks you will be getting see the recent floods in pakistan that are there that are going on now urban floods in bengaluru are there okay then landslides earlier in assam were there heat waves in north india prolonged heat waves in no north india these things again raise the debate of development versus environmental ethics what what we need a uh, unsustainable development or basically we need to protect our environment see the particular issue here is that the model that is followed by the countries it is energy intensive what do you mean by energy intensive energy intensive means which is not only raising the global temperatures but it is exhausting our natural resources when our natural resources will be exhausted we our future generations they will not be left with anything so that is why we have brought the concept of sustainable development if these things goes on basically then the sustainable development or the goal of even the sdgs cannot be achieved see particularly these natural disasters we need to look at is they are impacting all the sections of the society but particularly the poor take the example of basically um, uh, pakistan floods that are there see at least 1500 people have been killed there and the majority of them belongs to basically the poor section of the society who do not have shelter who do not have resources to cope up with the after effects of climate change okay to cope up with the natural disasters so the climate change is bearing an unbearable burden on the particularly vulnerable section of the society next one you can also quote another example here if you want to include it will depend upon the context and demand of the question you can see, give the example with respect to urban floods in bengaluru that while the poor and the vulnerable are particularly affected by this natural disasters but the wrath of the nature or the wrath of the natural disaster when the nature strikes back it does not look basically who is more powerful or who is more uh, vulnerable basically you will have must have seen the in the news with respect to urban floods that the areas in the bengaluru which are housing posh societies which are housing the elite businessmen 
or the most secured communities in the uh, Bengaluru city, they have been also affected by the urban floods and they have been rescued by the boats. So that point can also be mentioned here. Okay. So for that particular analysis, first of all, we need to look at what is environmental ethics. Okay. For development, for a sustainable development, we need an environmental perspective that can be integrated into the de uh, de development perspective. So that thing is called as the environmental uh, ethics. What is it? It is the applied philosophy okay, that studies the moral and ethical relations of human beings with their environments. How are you related to environment? How you are related to the nature? What, how does you see nature? How are you integrated with the nature? Okay, that your integration, your response, your relation to the environment will tell you basically whether you will go for environmental conservation and preservation or not. Okay, that is called as the environmental ethics. Coming to the issues of basically what are the ethical issues that are prevalent here with respect to the kind of development or the energy intensive model that we are following. See, some first of all is with respect to the equity. As I have already told you with the introductory part that the most affected with respect to the energy intensive development is the poor. We need to see whether they are getting the fruits of development or they are at the receiving end. Receiving end means they are the victims of climate change every year whenever floods or earthquakes or any type of natural disaster occurs we see that basically most of the individuals who have to cope up with are the vulnerable section of the society and basically they so they become at the receiving and every year they have to be displaced they have to be basically moved to a other locations so whether they are getting empowered in society with respect to what kind of development that we are following or basically they are vulnerable to that development or to the after effects of development particularly with respect to the climate change so whether equity is there or not equity by means here we means empowerment okay next is the sustainable development as i already told you whether the future generations will have the natural resources at their disposal or they will be burdened with the effects of climate change whether they will be able to promote the development according to their own needs or whether they will be basically having to deal with the after effects of climate change the frequency of the disasters it is said by experts that it will increase in the coming days or in the coming years so whether they will be have to bear with that or whether they will have the natural resources at their disposal you can also include here that basically they will be dealing with something that they are not what we say uh, that they have not contributed to okay they are not directly responsible for this kind of development or this kind of after effects that they will have to deal with that is our second issue of the sustainable development third one is the human rights whether your development right violates the basic rights of freedom your liberty your work whether basically uh, this kind of development violates your right to movement whether it violates your right to shelter whether it violates your working capacity whether it violates your health whether you are getting empowered in society that means the basically that is what comes in the human rights next one environmental issue whether the kind of development that we are promoting whether it leads to conservation and preservation of our environment or we are exhausting the environment or exploiting the environment for our short term gains we need to look at that what kind of thing or what kind of development we are following okay it whether it leads to promotion and conservation or the exploitation of natural sources for profit and short term goals and the last one here governance so this is an another important issue with respect to if you want to if we even want to promote sustainable development we need to what say promote environmental preservation and conservation whether that issues lead to the red tapeism whether that leads to corruption whether that leads to the delayed career clearances you must have studied with your economic classes that the major issue with respect in india with respect to implementation is the environmental clearances the that they are not basically uh, timely procedures that are put in place 
or the timely delays that are there basically or the corruption asked by the official to clear the projects whether it will lead to that, that or not so that is the thing so what are these are the ethical issues again i will repeat in uh, single lines first of all with respect to the equity whether poor are getting empowered or not sustainable development is there then the, there is the issue of human rights governance and whether it is leading to environmental conservation and preservation or not whenever you are writing a conclusion or you are writing way forward you should must mention in these kind of topics your sdgs that what needs to be done we needs to follow this second thing you need to talk about sendai framework okay that is with respect to disaster uh, reduction next thing you need to talk about is the inclusive and equitable development these three things must find a mention within your conclusion or basically within your measures that you will be writing to deal with this particular issues that are there in place so these are the three topics that we basically discussed with respect to society with respect to security and with respect to ethical issues okay there were things that basically are coming in pre and some of the things coming with respect to means perspective so segregate them and prepare accordingly all the best we will be meeting in our next class next week